everyone, this is Sadie Lady Crazy Plant Lady and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we'll be doing a houseplant tour of my 138 specimens in my 900 square foot apartment. So if you like this kind of content, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Instagram at Sadie Lady Crazy Plant Lady. So let's get into it. So today for the houseplant tour, we're going to be starting off in my living room where I have over half of the collection here. The next section will be in our bedroom and that's where I have the other half. Starting off on the coffee table, we have this terrarium that my boyfriend and I, Cody, put together from Wilson's Nursery. We just got the container from Hobby Lobby, and this is just a really pretty plate that we got from Walmart to put on top of it to enclose it. So in here we have an asparagus fern. There's a few plants in here that I'm not sure what they are because they didn't come with names. So this guy, not sure what it is. <laughs> We have a rippled peperomia, which has done really well in here. I actually cut a piece off the other day and just stuck it in the soil to the side and it seems to be doing very well. Down in here, we have a heart-leafed fern, which has also done really well. I've killed multiple of these already. And then this plant as well. Again, I don't know the name of that one. So if you do know, please put it in the comments below because those two plants, I'm not sure what their names are. But yeah, this is our little terrarium on our coffee table and it's done very, very well. I haven't had to replace any plants in this guy. Over in the southeast and southwest facing windows, we have a bunch of different stuff. We have my Swiss cheese plant, which I got from Brian's Botanicals in Shepherdsville, Kentucky. I have a couple of begonias. There's a weighty eye back here that's been struggling on and off. And another begonia that has some new foliage. But I've happened to kill every single begonia that I started my collection with two years ago. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong. We have a Hoya publicalix, which has beautiful silvery white modeling on the foliage. I have a propagating Hartley philodendron down here. A crocodile fern, which I'm pretty sure I got when I was in Philadelphia at Terrain. In the windowsill, we have aloe ferox, a sansevieria, and a raphalis. On this light stand, we have a horsehead philodendron which I got from Udell Botanical Gardens. Down below, my prized Sweetheart Hoya, which actually put out three new leaves in the past couple of months. Jewel Orchid, which I did have blooms on it this winter, so that was very exciting. I love the foliage of the Jewel Orchids. On this wooden bench, we have my Satin Pothos which has done extremely well. Alocasia poly. This plant was much bigger last year, but when I put it out on my balcony for the summer, I put it out too early and the leaves got scorched, so it's still recovering. A purple shamrock. Down below on this bench is kind of my plant rehab area. Some of them aren't doing as well as others. So we have some sort of squill that I got from Brian's Botanical Gardens. It does have really cool variegation. It's just for some reason lost that since all of the new foliage has died. So you can see a couple of modeling in there on that leaf. So waiting for that one to recover. A star begonia. Philodendron Brazil, which has some new leaves coming on, but it is struggling. More Sweetheart Hoyas, so that's Hoya Dikii. Love the venation of that one. This is my variegated Hoya, and over the past couple of days it started to get shriveled edges and this weird browning going on, so I'm not entirely sure. I just watered it yesterday, um, so I know I didn't overwater it, so I'm not sure what's going on there. This is one of my favorite prayer plants in my collection. And it's the one that doesn't get all crispy on the edges near as much as some of the others. So this is Fishbone Prayer. And I really love the silvery green foliage. 
in the purple tinge on the back. Some of the leaves have more purple than others, so you can see that new one is very much purple. Moving up into the southwest facing window, we have all kinds of little stuff. So in that corner we have aloe white fox. There's a very small cream spike agave. The next one is Bloodstot, Bloodspot Mangave from UW Botanical Gardens. A sedum. One of my favorite Sansevieria is the cylindrical form. A Gasteria. The cultivar on that one is Little Warty. In this little jar, I have a couple of things propagating. So we have a raindrop peperomia, which was doing really, really well and it was really big. And then for some reason it just died on me. So I'm trying to get it back. And then here's some more of that Hartley philodendron as well. Just sitting in the windowsill. Next to that we have, what is this? Um, it's like C-T-E-N-T-H-E. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's like C-T-E-N-A-T-H-E. Something like that. I can't pronounce it. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's related to the prayer prayer plants. Just not sure on the name. Because it does fold up and down um, depending on the lighting. Down here we have my Stromanthi Trio Star, which I absolutely love. And typically the bottom of the foliage is a pink color, so you can see it definitely on that one. But I love this plant and it dances with the sunlight as well, like the other prayer plants. And this one's done really well for me. It is a little crispy on the edges because I'm in the process of moving, so I don't have my humidifier set up right now. So that's why the edges are a little crispy, but fantastic plant and it's done really well. Below that one, we have Alocasia fry deck, which is absolutely stunning selection of Alocasia. Very, very velvety and iridescent leaves. Below that, I have another Swiss cheese plant or Monstera. This is a bunch of propagules that I've done because my mother plant at some point had spider mites. So I was afraid of losing it. So I propagated some more. So hopefully that will start to fill out soon. We have a fiddle leaf fig, which isn't doing all that well. I haven't quite figured out how to take care of it, but I'm trying. <laughs> So he just has one leaf he's hanging on. Back here, Calatheas are really hard in my apartment because it's so dry. Um, but this is a medallion. The next one is another terrarium. I only have two little terrarium setups. But in here we have Begonia scapagera, which is a very unique, very cool begonia with chartreuse leaves and almost a red edge. And it's been in this container probably a year and a half and it's done really well. And I've only watered it maybe twice. So it's very self-sustaining. Anthurium vecchii, King Anthurium. Again, not doing well. I struggle in the winter with my house plants, but it's kind of holding on. The rest of the plants on this shelf near our balcony sliding door are all alocasias or elephant ears. So the first one is Regal Shields, which has very beautiful foliage with a purple tinge. The next alocasia is Tyrion. I think that's how you pronounce it. Fantastic foliage. I love the scalloped rippled edges on them. One thing with alocasias is houseplants. They don't do very well in the winter, being they're stressed out and they don't have a lot of light. They get a lot, a lot of mealybugs. So I'm constantly having to put these in the shower and rinsing them off. So you can see a little bit of mealybug damage on here, but washing it off isn't too difficult but definitely time consuming. But this is Alocasia Tiny Dancers. Absolutely love this plant. Very, very cool. And I got this one from Brian's Botanicals as well. 
And I really love the structure of that plant. The next one is Alocasia cerian. And it just has one little leaf that's hanging on. But I love how dramatic the foliage is. And the white venation is stunning. One of my first alocasias I ever got from Brian's Botanicals is Mayan Mask, which has extremely purple foliage. And a lot of these are brand new leaves. So you can see the purpling there and they're very, very glossy. And I like the lime green venation in it as well. So these look a lot better during the summer when they have more sun and I can put them outside. So right now they're kind of sad. This one's probably my favorite. And this is Alocasia Stingray. You can see where it gets that cultivar name. And the leaves are just fantastic. This one I got when I was in Raleigh, North Carolina for the Perennial Plant Association meeting. And I got it at Big Bloomer's Flower Farm near or outside of Raleigh. So you can see here's one of my very first biggest leaves. So you can see how big they are but I'm pretty sure they can get a couple feet in diameter. So hopefully once he's outside, he'll get a lot bigger. In this back corner, I have a Monstera Peru, which did have a bunch of leaves, but I think it got stressed out. So it just has a little bud on it. So hopefully it starts to leaf out again. We have a Crassula, which I can't remember. Pondoland Crassula. It hasn't done super well for me, um, but I really love the foliage and how thick it is. Moving back to the ground in front of that shelf, we have probably my most prized houseplants in my collection. So this one is Manfreda Cherry Chocolate Chip. And you can see where it gets its cherry chocolate chip name. It has reddish brown speckling on the foliage. And some of my favorite parts of it are the new leaves are extremely rippled. So you can see how it's kind of folded in itself. And then the ripples are really gorgeous. But definitely the cherry chocolate chip portion is my favorite. And it's done extremely well. I got this particular plant from Plant Delights, also in North Carolina. And it's quadrupled in size since I brought it home. The next plant is a mangave. The next few are mangaves, and they're probably one of my favorite selections of plants. This one is Mission to Mars. Is the cultivar of this one. And you can see it has a really pretty purpley red modeling on the foliage. Extremely drought tolerant. And they don't seem to mind the dry climate I have in my apartment. The next one is Mangave Ink Blot. And all of these mangaves I got from Udell Botanical Gardens, um, where I'm the garden and arboretum manager. So Ink Blot, again, has that beautiful modeling on the foliage and more of a serrated edge. The next one, Mangave Man of Steel. Really thin, thread-like foliage, which is very unique for the mangaves. Lastly, we have Lavender Lady, which I don't know if you can tell how big it is. Um, this one is known for its lavender foliage, but being I don't get a whole lot of sunlight, it's lost that. So hopefully once the summer gets here and I can put it outside, it'll have more lavender to its foliage. On this shelf, I forgot to water this one, but this is Watermelon Peperomia, and it's done extremely well if Sadie remembers to water it. So that one should bounce back. It usually does. This plant I got given to me by a volunteer at Udell Botanical Gardens, and it is a night blooming cereus. It has beautiful white blooms on it. I haven't had it bloom for me yet, but I haven't had it too long. And the foliage is really, really pretty. And the venation as well, where you can see the connection of each leaf. And it's put on a lot of new growth. So all of these little branches are all brand new and it seems to be really happy. So hopefully in a few months, I'll get nice blooms on it. This plant 
what is he? I can't remember what this one is either. This was kind of an impulse buy at a big box store, which I hate doing, but I just couldn't help myself because the foliage is very pretty. So I went ahead and got it. On this plant stand, I have a bat flower, which has been struggling. It definitely likes a lot of humidity. Um, so being it fluctuates so much in my apartment, it doesn't like me very much. But the blooms on these are really cool. So if you look up bat flower, you'll find a lot of really cool blooms and you'll see why I have it. And this is the black version. So it has a black flower on it. So there's the Latin name for that one. Alrighty, so before we do the shelf, in front of it, we have a couple of more specimens. So this first one is a coconut palm, which I got at the Plant Kingdom in Louisville. My boyfriend Cody really loves palms. Um, so we buy a couple of them to get him more interested in houseplants. Behind it, we have a struggling money tree. But do you think this plant would be easy? Because everybody has one and they sell them so often. Um, but mine's not very happy. The next plant is this, I think the common name is trailing watermelon vine um, or trailing begonia vine, but I'm pretty sure it's not a begonia. I think it's like a pelionia. Let me see, I think the tag's in here. So yeah, there's the Latin name on that. And I try to get my names as accurate as possible, but it's really hard with houseplants to find a reputable source that has good naming. There's a bird's nest fern, or not fern, that's a Sansevieria. Definitely doesn't look like a fern. <laughs> so a Sansevieria. Up here I have an arrowhead vine, which is variegated, but a lot of its leaves fell off this winter. But here you can see the new leaves have a lot of variegation. That one has a completely white half, which I really like. And you can see some really pretty modeling on that one as well. Let me see if I got the name right. It might be. Yeah, so variegated arrowhead vine. One of my favorites in the living room is this parallel peperomia which has amazing venation on it. And it's kind of scraggly, which I actually kind of enjoy because it's always searching so for the sunlight. So you can see this little branch is reaching towards the window, um, but the foliage is still really, really beautiful. And I kind of like its gracefully scraggly look. Next one is a Syngonium, which the cultivar is, let's see if, I don't know if I would super trust it, but Pink Illusion Arrowhead Plant. Again, another impulse buy at a big box store, which I shouldn't be doing, but I get excited. You can't stop a plant addict from buying a plant. <laughs> this is a Peperomia Ginny, which is also struggling. I don't think I have it in enough light because um, I have other plants that I would rather have more light. So I'm not super worried about this one, but it has some new foliage on it. But hopefully once I get it more light, it'll be a lot happier. Um, and thrive in my collection. So this concludes the living room portion of the house plant tour. Next, we'll move into our bedroom. Our first plant is a marble pothos. This is where I keep most of my pothos or epiprimums. This is another pothos, which I'm pretty sure is supposed to be a golden, but it doesn't have a whole lot of that golden color. Um, because it doesn't get as much light. So it's lost some of that, but it is still really beautiful and just great greenery in the bedroom. Here we have what I'm pretty sure is Pearls and Jade. So you can see the name there. And this one I got from Brian's Botanicals as well. He just gave me a cutting and it's done really well. One of my favorites, he's a little dusty right now because he needs a bath, um, but this is Epiprimum, pretty sure it's Dragon Tail. Yeah, so Dragon Tail Pothos or Epiprimum Pinatum. And it's definitely, I would say in my top 10 favorite plant um, in my collection. So you see it has a lot of brand new foliage. And I like these little 
holes that it has down the vein, the mid vein. And this I actually got from Brian's Botanicals as well, but it was just a single leaf cutting. So I would say probably this leaf is one of the first leaves that I propagated it from. And it's grown tremendously um, for me in here in the bedroom against this mirror. The next one is a Neon Pothos, which is another fantastic one. And it's performed very well. On this little plant stand here, I have a few plants. So one of my very first plants is the trusty jade plant, which was actually propagated off the mother plant at Udell Botanical Gardens um, by one of the apprentices. The next plant is a Sansevieria, which has gotten ginormous. So I don't know if you can see how tall he is there. He's just in a little tiny pot. But Cody also likes Sansevierias as well. So we got this one at Pemberton's in Lexington, Kentucky. This one here is another Pothos. Let's see if I can find the actual name. So it's another Satin Pothos. And there's its name. It's done really well as, really well as well. That's a mouthful. But it's a beautiful trailing viney plant like the rest of the pothos. And it's done really well. The one down here is a Hoya macrophylla, which is absolutely fantastic. I love the veination and how they're kind of rigid and raised, but also the slight variegation on some of the foliage as well is really pretty. And it's definitely trailing. Down here, I have my philodendron micans, which really does not like me. Um, I think at one point it had root aphids, which absolutely wiped it out, but there is some new foliage on it and new growth. So hopefully it'll recover. If not, I'll just toss it and see if I can find another one. But it's a really beautiful velvety leaf philodendron, which I really love. So that's the little plant stand next to the door and the dresser. And then next we'll move over to my hanging plant display. So here I have a couple of different hanging specimens. And this is just a clothing rack that I got from probably Lowe's. And it works really well to hang plants. So here on this little box we have my rubber tree, which is three separate little propagules. We have one of my very few cactus. I absolutely hate cactus. This one especially because the little red pricklies and thorns get stuck in everything it touches and they're extremely difficult to get out. But I couldn't pass it up because of the reddish orange prickles. I just thought it was really pretty. But definitely dangerous around curtains or any type of clothing. <laughs> Here we have a Hoya that at one point did have mealybugs and it just was not happy. But this is Hoya carnosa variegata, a really great selection of Hoya. So you can see a lot of new foliage coming in the center. So hopefully it's recovered, um, but time will tell. Up on this rack, we have Peperomia hope, which I absolutely love this plant. And I got this one when I was in Chicago visiting the Chicago Botanic Garden at, um, I think it's called Sprout Home in Chicago, a really great uh, plant shop and florist. Next we have Peperomia prostrata, creeping peperonia, which is done extremely well. I've cut this back so many times, but it just keeps shooting out new foliage. And I love the venation and coloring on that one. This is another Hoya, which I'm pretty sure is the Variegata. I'm struggling. Yeah, the Variegata, the tricolor Hoya, and it's done really well as well. I like this one because of the pink tinge to the main stems, and the variegation is very, very, very beautiful. Another Epiprimum. This is Cebu Blue. It is a very unique foliage plant compared to the other epiprimums and pothos. 
a Peperomia Ruby Cascade, which is definitely struggling. I forgot to water it, <laughs> but it's definitely recovering and I think it'll be just fine. Hoya Kentuckia, another wax flower. Love this one because it has more linear folded foliage, which is really pretty and it's done very well also. On the bottom tier, we have, I'm pretty sure this is Philodendron Brazil. I always get those confused, but I'm pretty sure it's Philodendron Brazil. A very full plant and it's done really, really well. This is another Raphalis, which again, another impulse buy from a big box store but I couldn't help myself. I'd never seen this one before and it has a lot of new growth on it. And it's very happy right here. Next, this is a Southwest facing window. And this is where I keep all of my cacti and succulents and a couple of other things. Like you see a whale's fin sansevieria over there, but it's shaded and it seems to really like it there. So we'll start over here. We have a corkscrew rush, which I'm pretty sure I killed. Um, I don't know why I haven't thrown it away, but it's still pretty. This is Whale's Fin Sansevieria that I got from Mahonia in Nulu, which is an area in Louisville. Kalinkoe Lavender Scallops from Udell Botanical Gardens. Devil's Backbone Plant which I got from a friend. I'm pretty sure it might be from Plant Kingdom. We have a thornless cactus back here that's just hanging out. Um, hasn't done very well. <laughs> that's a little branch down there that fell off that I was trying to propagate, um, but it doesn't seem like it wants to. We have Kalinkoe Copper Spoons. I may have messed up its, its genus name. But this is Copper Spoons. Yeah, it's a Kalinkoe. And I love the coppery, um, bronzy foliage. And they're very, very fuzzy. But the coloring is really pretty. Crassula Jade Fingers. A very cool plant. It almost looks like ogre ears off of Shrek, which I really enjoy. Ponytail Palm, which Cody just had to go home with. Um, so we have that one as well, and it's very cool. Uh, I really like the trunk on it. It's still in its nursery pot, but that's a really cool palm that we've added recently. A variegated peperomia. A night blooming cereus, which I also got from Sprout Home in Chicago. Um, and it's undulated, so it has that crinkled leaf. A very small propagule of string of beans which is really fun. A string of dolphins, which has a few dolphins and it's starting to revert because it doesn't get a whole lot of sun. So I recently moved it into this spot. So hopefully it gets more dolphins on it. String of hooks, which has done very well. A sedum, which I got from Perennial Plant Association while I was in, I think Chicago. Silver Brax is this plant, um, a very good succulent, and it's performed really well in here. Desert Rose, which has also done really well. You can see it's kind of dancing towards the sunlight, but another really cool plant. I haven't had it bloom for me before, um, so I'm not sure what color it is, but I'm looking forward to when it blooms. This is, let's see. Yeah, another Peperomia. So this is Ruby Glow. This one also doesn't seem to like me very well. It was doing really, really good. Um, and then for some reason it just went downhill. But it does have a lot of new foliage on it. So you can see here, there's some new growth. So hopefully it just needed a little bit more sunlight. Um, a lot of these struggle during the winter because of the lack of intense sunlight but they do seem to bounce back each spring. Paper Spine Cactus, which I got from Plant Kingdom in Louisville. 
this plant is really fun. It's one of my very first plants in my collection. It's the Mother of Thousands plant. And it gets its name from producing all of these little propagules on the ends of its leaf margins, which are really, really cool. And I do know this is invasive in some warmer climates, but here we don't have that issue. Um, but it's also a really good house plant. The next plant is a euphorbia, which I absolutely love. And this is a miniature sogoria. And it's performed amazingly in my collection. This is one that I shoved in my suitcase on the flight back from Raleigh, North Carolina during a PPA conference. On the windowsill, we have a Madagascar palm, which we also got from Plant Kingdom. And it's done extremely well. And it's quadrupled in size since I originally got it. It's very happy. This is a cocoon plant. You can see it gets its name from its cocoon-like foliage. And this is another plant that I bought at Udell Botanical Gardens. We have an eye flower, which did have blooms on it last summer, and it's performed really well also. One of my favorites in here is this jade necklace, which is a fantastic, fantastic house plant. Let's see if I can get it. So it's a crassula, and you can see how beautiful the little leaves are. Definitely look like little necklaces. And the purple red edges or margins to the foliage is fantastic. And this is a plant I got from Chicago during PPA at Chalet, which is a fantastic garden center outside or near Chicago. Next to that, another cactus. This is a barrel cactus that I also got from Plant Kingdom. And he constantly is dancing back and forth to the window, depending on how I rotate him, which is a lot of fun. So he'll completely shift his position about every couple of days. So I have to rotate him pretty often. We'll jump back over here. On this saucer, this was actually a I think a little subscription box that Cody got me for, I think our anniversary or my birthday. And it came with these four little succulents, which have been really fun and they've grown quite a bit. I forget the name of this little propagule that I have. Um, I'm pretty sure the cultivar is Medusa. I just can't remember what genus it is. Here we have another plant, which is starting to get better. It's another Crassula and it's Princess Pine. And I really love this one because it's very abnormal to most of the Crassula. And the foliage is really pretty. And it does look like a little prince, like a pine, a little baby pine, which I really enjoy. This plant is another one that I propagated from a stock plant at Udell Botanical Gardens. I also don't have the name of that one. It was just some random thing that we had in the greenhouse, um, but I thought it was really pretty. So I went ahead and propagated the piece. Here's another one of my favorites in this area. That'll be a common theme because it's hard for me to pick a favorite. This is my helicopter plant. And it's absolutely fantastic. Another one that I got in Raleigh. Let me see if I can get the Latin name for you guys. It's another Crassula. Um, Flaccata Ivory Pagoda, but it's performed extremely well here in my apartment. And I just think it's a really cool, funky plant that you don't always see that kind of structure. Almost looks like a little ladder, which is really fun. The last few I have on this shelf, of course, a donkey's tail or burrow's tail um, is a must have in a collection and it's done extremely well. I've cut it back a couple of times and it just keeps pushing out more and more growth. But such a beautiful, beautiful plant. Behind that, we have a zigzag cactus, which is all kinds of distorted. Um, during the summer, I think I may have exposed it to too much sunlight too quickly. And it got these little weird, almost like pimple or wart-like growths on it that were brownish. And I wanted to see what would happen if I cut all the leaves off and see if it rejuvenated. And it seems to rejuvenate just fine. And I don't think there's any of that weird spotting 
that I saw last summer. Here's another variegated peperomia, very similar to Ginny in the living room, but not as unhealthy. <laughs> so this one gets a lot more sun. So I think it's a lot, a lot happier here. Of course, the Pilea peppermooides, probably one of the more iconic house plants to have, and it's done extremely well. I actually got this during a house plant swap with local plant addicts here in Louisville. And lastly, not ending off on the best note, but this is a vertical leaf Senecio, which I really enjoy. It has beautiful purple coloring to where the leaf attaches to the stem, which is really fun. And the leaves are just fantastic. You can see they're really, really thin, which is really, really cool. So that wraps up the houseplant tour for today. Thank you guys for joining today. I hope you subscribe down below and leave any comments that you have for me in the comment section as well. And be sure to check out my Instagram account at Sadie Lady Crazy Plant Lady, also linked in the description below. Thank you.